here at my Okay. And he was asking the depth of it and all that. I just said, dig, dig, dig down near the garage and see how deep that one is. And then the, I think what he told me was a straight line. Yeah. Across from there to the floor.
making her debut on percussion today is Trish. It's time for your song. No, it's not. No, it's not. Oh, Trish, you're not up yet. Woo, sneak peek. But I do need a percussionist. <laughs> Don't know that one yet. <laughs> not trained. I'm not, I'm not trained.
Welcome to worship. It's really good to see you. As you may have seen on the Thanksgiving Eve worship, I was waiting for the result of a second COVID test, and thanks be to God, at 8.27 on Thanksgiving morning, it came through as negative. So I am very thankful for that and for you. And especially Jackie, who read the sermon. It, which, after which I said, would you like to go to seminary? And she said, no, thank you, no, thank you. <laughs> so it's a little tricky today, the first Sunday in Advent, but I think the team has figured out, and probably Bev, how to do something for an Advent wreath. <laughs> uh, today we will keep in our thoughts and our prayers our sister Marie, who is at home recovering from hip surgery. Uh, Dave Pagenkoff is in the hospital um, getting some tests and we will keep Dave and his family in our prayers. Also, Pastor Giselle Coutino and her husband have tested positive for COVID and I understand they have symptoms so we will keep them in our thoughts and prayers. Pastor Giselle is uh, serving at Bridge of Peace, one of our mission partners. And then I have some sad news. Walt Cliver, one of our homebound members, died on November 18th. Um, Walt has lived in Maryland for several years, and the graveside service will be sometime in the spring. Um, during the prayers, Tom Schultz will share a prayer and I'll let you know when Tom and today we celebrate Holy Communion and finally our annual meeting is a week from today Sunday December 6th 12 noon via zoom please contact the church office 
for the login information. Thank you. And now we're ready for the opening hymn. And Trisha's debut on the drum. Woo and who desire may stand. Blessed be God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed a stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven, and you are free. Free from all that holds you back, and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins. And keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Jay, turn on Chrissy's hey, mic. Siri, turn Chrissy's mic up. Divine Advent. Our mission means a strong desire to do or to achieve something, typically requiring determination and hard work. So 
if you didn't hear Siri, I asked Siri to define Advent, and she says, whoops. Hey Siri, define Advent. Advent means the arrival of a notable person, thing, or event. So the arrival of a notable thing, person, or event. And so Miss Chrissy's got a present over there. The present is actually for Ella. And Ella, if you take a look at your present, it's a big old tag. That is the biggest tag that I've ever seen on a present. So Ella, I think you need to read your present. It says, hey you, don't open until Christmas. What do you mean, hey you? I thought it was your present, Ella. Well, the good news is this particular present is for you and for you and for you and for you and for you. And it is for all of our families at home. The Macri family, the Bozart family, the Horn family, the Dahlia family, the Crip family. We miss all of you so much. Nevertheless, this present is for you. It's heavy. Is it really heavy, Miss Chrissy? It's got, some it's got some weight to it, doesn't it? Now, Advent, if we're talking about the coming of a special event or person or a thing, and really and truly, yes, we are waiting. But we're doing something else while we're waiting. We are preparing. We are preparing for the birth of Christ, but the good news is we know what's in that box. Ella, do you know what's in that box? Miss Chrissy, do you know what's in that box? Do you want the church answer? I want the church answer. The church answer is it's baby Jesus. Is it baby Jesus? It is baby Jesus, Yay! yes. Woo! So we are waiting and we are preparing for the birth of Jesus. It is the grace of God and it is the gift for all of us. And Miss Ella, I think there's another tag there that you need to read. While you wait, prepare. So the tag says, while you wait, prepare. So please, in this month of Advent, and as we begin our Advent season, be thinking, how can I prepare for the birth of Jesus? Beyond our decorations, beyond our gift giving, and preparing for those things, especially in the time of Zoom and the time of COVID, we have new possibilities for preparing for the birth of our Jesus in this season of Advent. All this we pray in your name. Amen. And everybody together, help me out. Yay, Yay God! God. The first reading is from the 64th chapter of Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when the fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are like our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Holy wisdom, holy word.
Okay. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for this evergreen crown that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the first candle on this wreath, rouse us from sleep, that we may be ready to greet our Lord when he comes with all the saints and angels. Enlighten us with your grace and prepare our hearts to welcome him with joy. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain, and whose day draws near. Amen. Amen. Talk about a good team. <laughs> Let us say Psalm 80 responsibly. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God, let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. O Lord of God, how long will your anger fume and your people pray? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one you have made so strong for yourself. And so we will never turn away from you. Give us life, that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. The second reading is from the first chapter of 1 Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge, and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gifts as you wait for the real revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you are called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Holy wisdom, holy word. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, In those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. 
Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Creator and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Advent is a season rich in potential. It is a time pregnant with promise. It is the church's four weeks of preparation for the coming of Christ into our hearts again. In a fresh way, we pray, for we have not lost Christ since last Christmas. Advent is a season rich in potential. It's a time pregnant with promise, as in Mary's growing womb. Attempting to rush the promise to deliver early is and has been ill-advised since ancient days. Rushing generally causes more trouble in the long run. Advent is a season rich in potential, pregnant with promise. It is a time, at least in our northern hemisphere, of dusk descending earlier and earlier. The harvests have long been gathered, the flowers have faded, the leaves have fallen, or nearly so. The snows bringing an eerie rush, Darkness and silence are upon us now as at no other time of the year. For some of us, the silence may be entirely external, for others entirely internal. A sadness about something, and for others still a mix of the two. Regardless, we are entirely aware of changes in our mood, in our surroundings. Perhaps family relationships are strained or have broken down altogether. Perhaps a loved one is ill or dying. Perhaps one dear has recently died. Or some may be confronting their selfishness, greed, or unkind thoughts or behavior. Perhaps COVID fatigue has you wishing you could just skip Advent and Christmas altogether this year and wake up sometime in 2021 when it's all over. We may even be aware that this separation from others, this wanting of stuff or a change, is a separation from God, what the church has historically called sin. The people crying out to God in Isaiah were feeling this. The people cry out together, it is a community lament. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. The people are desperate most likely still in Babylon, praying for redemption, alienated from their homeland, living among foreigners, suffering from their sin, real or perceived, and estranged from God. Whatever the cause of the darkness deep inside, we seem to know that our need is for God. We too cry out to God, pleading for aid, for the word, for the food and drink that truly satisfies the deep longing and hunger for the holy in us. So we come together and worship these four Sundays of Advent to light a candle, one more each week, that we might stave off the growing darkness in our world and perhaps in our souls. Advent is a season rich in potential. It is a time pregnant with promise. 
The darkness need not be entirely avoided, though. Silence, too, is precious. But we have to pay the price it demands. Silence till we are willing to wait in that very darkness and emptiness. Trust what lies below the barren fields. Trust what lies beneath the bare trees and flower bushes. The roots are there waiting in silent darkness. The roots are there in our hearts and souls as well. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The promise is in the roots, and the roots of the coming one run deep indeed. Amen. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. 
Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for this planet in need of restoration, for devastated habitats, polluted waters, thawing ice, blazing fires, swelling floods, and long-lasting droughts. Renew the face of the earth and our relationship to it. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion and the power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed. With welcome for those who are excluded and with relief for those who suffer. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for people who are in crisis as the seasons change. For those without homes facing severe weather. For those who are unemployed or underemployed and for those in poverty or facing food insecurity. We give thanks for Sister Frankie's ministry at Mount Nebo, Nebo Church in Mount Holly. Relieve their burdens, sustain their bodies, and ease their minds. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for the people in our families and congregation who live with depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, post-traumatic stress disorder, and those suffering from COVID-19. Ease their suffering and support them when they struggle. Hear us, O oh God. We give thanks for the lives and witness of those who died while waiting for justice, peace, or healing. Those whose names we know and those whose names are known only to you. Sustain all who still yearn for the, the completion of your redeeming work. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Tom, do you want to add your prayer? Continue in prayers for the pig and cough family. Thank you, Tom. Hear us, O God. Gracious God, today we also pray for Pastor Giselle and her husband who have tested positive. And we also continue to pray for Marie who is recovering from hip surgery. Be with all these, our brothers and sisters, and give them the strength and comfort they need for each hour of each day. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Thank you all again for your ongoing support of St. Paul's and the ministry we share. You may send your offering to the church office, place it in the basket on the cart here, or give online. Let us pray together. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts, the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. you all to stand and take your individual serving and raise it up. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Even as we watch and wait, Christ is here. Come, eat and drink. Thanks be to God. The body and blood of Christ given and shed for you.
Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us, and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior fill you with love. And the unexpected Spirit guide your journey now and forever. Amen. Amen. The giving tree is up and running. When you go online and you take a look, um, you need to scroll all the way to the bottom and then you'll see like the, the next button. Okay, because what's happening, I think people are seeing the first slots are, have been filled, but there are many more to go. We have the awesome opportunity of serving our families of Haynesport with the giving tree, so please check it out. The link is there for you if you have any questions. Please don't hesitate to call Jen McLaren, and myself, certainly Laurie Macri, and Nana. I know this isn't going to be Mike, but I want to thank everybody for their generosity for the Thanksgiving baskets. The families that received them were overwhelmed. Thank you. That was thanking for everyone for the Thanksgiving baskets and their donations. They were greatly received. Go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for your help. Of course. 
See you next week, St. Paul's. Be safe.